Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It is Wednesday, May 12th, and we are delighted that you are joining us today. If you are on our website, maybe because you are reading my missives that are out there, We would love to hear from you. All you need to do is hit the contact button. And of course, if you would like to come on the air with us, we would love that so much because then we get to ask some juicy questions. So today we have Marcy, who's on the line from Pennsylvania. Hello, Marcy. How are you today? Good morning, Jill and Mark. I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys today. So, what brings you to our airwaves today? Well, I'm kind of at a Somewhat at a pivot point, I would say, in my career, Um, I've spent about almost the last 35 years working very hard, saving a ton, maybe not thinking so much about then what. And now as I'm looking ahead, you know, sort of thinking about semi-retiring, of course, COVID's impacted that a bit. Now, I'm, you know, have I feel like there's a number of decisions that we need to make over the next couple of years, and I would love your input on some of those decisions. Okay, so there's a we, so there's a partner. So you are married, and how old are you guys? I am 63, and my husband is 69. And are you both in semi-retirement or contemplating that? What, where do each of you stand in terms of career? So I have my own consulting firm and I was, you know, starting to cut back and then COVID came. So I said, well, I can't travel or do anything. So I really kept working through COVID, although not taking on as many assignments as I had pre-COVID. So I am probably working 50% of what I used to work. My husband's cut back quite a bit, but still he's in the arts. He has something he more is more of a, a hobby, passionate type of career. Uh, so he's not making a ton of money at this point, but still loves what he does. So, you know, it's more about keeping ourselves busy and all of that. But certainly, you know, as we can start to travel again next year, uh, you know, I could I know I could retire now, but I'm just trying to think about kind of what to do because there's some moving parts. I guess. So if, if you look at 2021, tell me what your combined income looks like right now. 2021, probably around 75,000, I would estimate. Do you think that if you were looking forward, um, you know, you're 63, but if you look a, a couple of years, like, is this about where you, what you think you'll be making until you're claiming your own social security, or I don't know if your husband's claimed his or not, but is this kind of the income you're targeting right now? Actually, I, I would like to work less, All you know, maybe over the next two years or so, my, my actual working income could could go down even further than that, maybe even closer to 30 to 50. And we'll start to supplement it with, you know, our savings. We'll get to that in a second, because you said you saved a ton. And I happen to know a ton may be an understatement because I read your email. So um, let's talk about a couple of things. So first of all, your husband is already claimed, has already claimed Social Security or is he delayed? He claimed at full age. Uh, so yes, he is taking Social Security. He's on Medicare. Uh, his Social Security is about six eighty a month after his Medicare premiums. Okay, got it. All right, now let's go through the savings. Let's start. You've got a, an emergency reserve fund. Yes, uh, I have emergency reserve. You know, one hundred and ten thousand or so. And is that like in cash, or is that in investments, or is that? You know, is it really just really boring stuff? It's a lot of it is still invested. I mean, I'm mostly in like index funds, uh, but some of that is in cash. All right. So then tell me more about your tons and tons of saving. We were late to the Roth, you know, IRAs just because of our age, but we did start when those started. So between the two of us, we have about 230,000 in Roth IRAs. Okay, great. Now, traditional IRAs. So my husband... uh, at different points has had access to IRAs. So he has about 170,000 in uh, traditional IRA. And for you, ha- have you been putting money away in your own retirement plan? Like how have you been managing that since you're self-employed? Okay. So I, I started my career, I, I worked close to 25 years in corporate America, literally from day one, started stashing every penny I could in what was for a long time, traditional IRAs. At, uh, excuse me, traditional 401ks at work. And then when I started my consulting business uh, about 15 years ago, a planner, a, C, a CFP recommended I open up a personal defined benefit plan, which I've never heard of. 
And it was probably the best thing I ever did. So I, throughout my last 15, well, I had that plan open for 10 years when I was really making some good money consulting and put away probably 50% of my income every year almost. So we never really changed our lifestyle, even though my income started, you know, going up when I had my own firm. And the defined benefit plan, you said, did you close it down and roll that over? I did. I closed it down uh, after 10 years and rolled it to a uh, traditional IRA. So how much in all of that pre-tax uh, retirement savings do you have right now? Well, because the markets have also been uh, on fire, I now have about five and a half million. Yeah. Mark, Mark, what kind of sounder could we have to warn people that they are going to hear from somebody who has saved a ton of money and they're going to complain to me? What What is the sounder that that is like the should we have like a bomb? Should we like what's like I, like I celebrate this. I think this is amazing. I just want to know, Marcy, when you say you were making more money, like how much more money were you making in those years? When I left corporate America, my income was, you know, somewhere between, let's say, 150 and 175, depending on bonuses. Okay. In my kind of go-go years as a consultant, there were a number, there were probably five or six years where it was north of 250. Maybe. But you know what? You weren't making $2 million. You weren't working for a big Wall Street bank. You just, no, you, it just you, you made money and you saved a ton of money. Correct? Yeah. Is that the fair way to put it? Correct. And I've been driving a 17-year-old car. So if you saw me on the street, you would say, oh, yeah, there's a nice working woman. But you know. So this is fantastic. I mean, truly amazing. So congratulations on being an amazing saver. Really, it's it's fantastic. Now, let me ask you a couple of other questions while I have you here. So let's talk about income. Because at age 70, what do you got? Let's just say like both of your social security amounts will be about how much when you oh, reach 70. Okay. I, I checked into that um, about 4,500 combined a month. Fabulous. Great. Is there any other income? Do you have rental property or any other income distribution vehicles that are out there? We have one investment property that we get like fourteen hundred a month. I mean, it, it you know, there's no mortgage. Mm-hmm. I'd like to sell that at some point. We're just sort of waiting for the, <laughs> the tenants to, to, to move. Uh, we like them, so we don't want to kick them out. But okay, so more, you know, maybe five hundred a month if, if that were still going on. I would net about how much do you think your monthly need is? Well, I've always kind of said about. You know, one twenty-five a year is sort of what we spend. Let me see. So you know, ten ten thousand a month, maybe. Okay. Pre-tax. Pre-tax. And that's right. really large, you know, for us. Okay. I know you don't know how to spend money, you and your seventeen-year-old car. Obviously, you have plenty of money to retire, right? Because you've got six grand a month, which will be Social Security and rental income. And even if the rental income went away, you have six million dollars. So you're in great shape, I guess. For you, tell me what the real questions, I know that this is going to be about how we're going to reduce the amount of money that's taxable to you. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's part of it. And again, I, I, I know I don't have an issue, but I'm just trying to optimize at this point. Mm. I haven't really thought about the future that much. So a uh, couple things. One is, do we, we have a mortgage right now. Do I pay it off or not pay it off? We, the house is worth about 1.1 million. The mortgage right now is about 380, 390 left on it. You're going, you're going to cringe, but it's a seven one arm because when we move to you know where we are now, like nine ten years ago, we had sold our old house. We were planning to pay cash for this house, and I the rates were so low. I said, let me do the arm. I'll pay it off next year. And then I wound up investing it, you know, which turned out to be good. But at this point, you know, I it's going to go up again. Uh, it's going to go up at the end of the year with I'm sure with rates going up. It's still under three percent, which is great. But anyway, but I kind of like to get rid of that if I okay. could. And then the other thing is I've already done some, you know, I've used some of the online calculators. My RMDs, you know, if from what I have today, they're, they're estimating will be like 325, 345 in that range. Ugh. Way more than I need and way more than I've ever had. It puts me in a, obviously a higher tax bracket. So my question is, should I start taking out maybe more substantial amounts from the IRAs between now and 72 when those yes. kick in. Yes, so. yes, yes, no doubt. So what I'm thinking is this. Right now, you guys are, oh, I don't know, you're probably hovering in the 12 or the 22% tax bracket, depending on the year. But I really would not worry about keeping it in the 12%. You just don't have enough time to get the money out. So what I would do is... 
um, before you get to your age 70, not 72, because I know the RMD start at 72, but so too does your social security, which is going to add to your burden. Maximally, you would want to keep your income under about $330,000 between the two of you. And you can back into how much money that is and pay the 24% rate because you know what that is. That number is only going to potentially be higher as you retire. Now, the thing that's also kind of interesting, I don't know, like the mortgage payoff, it's fine. You just don't have a ton of money in non in taxable assets. So the brokerage account, you know, you're going to have to soak up some of the money there. So maybe the first thing we do is, you know, maybe number one, let's get 170 grand of your husband's traditional IRA, take it out. Let's be done with it. You know, you're going to pay the tax. It doesn't matter whether it's a Roth or not. You're going to need cash. Because you need cash to kind of finance the next few years, your seven years. And so you can live on that. So let's take the money out of his account. Stop working so much so you don't pop us into a higher tax bracket. And then next year, you start working on your own account. You know, the thing about the house is I don't want to pull the money out of that account and pay down the house. I just feel a little bit like I don't want to soak up that liquidity. In other words, I don't want to pull the money out to pay the tax and then soak up that liquidity. Are you going to sell this house? I didn't ask you that. I'm sorry. In five years, maybe. In five years? Okay. So you you could do another arm then. You are going to put a trigger to yourselves if you do an arm because then you really better sell it because rates are going up. So I would probably refinance that sooner rather than later and get it done and just fix it or fix it or just get another arm or get a 10 year arm instead of a seven year arm, but whatever, you know, you'll be fine. And you'll pay that off eventually. You really will. It's not going to be a big deal, right? If for some reason you said that the investment property, how much is that worth? Oh, like 220. So if you're going to eventually sell that, that'll help you with your liquidity issue. Meaning when I say liquidity, I mean, you have plenty of liquidity. It's just that it's not been taxed yet. So if you have that property and then you eventually sell your house, then you're going to really be able to get a lot of this money out of your IRA next and start whittling that down and paying the taxes at the maximal 24% tax bracket. Don't go above that though. And then I think it's really about managing this process so that you enjoy yourselves. You know, you've, you've spent a good chunk of your career being super savers and you should enjoy yourself. I, I don't really think there's anything, you know, bad about this. Do you have all of your, um, uh, your, your estate planning done is, and like, where, where did you have kids? I didn't even ask you about Yeah, that. we have it. We have a daughter, we have a, a grandchild, which is the best thing ever. Uh, there, so she's married. She's, you know, she's all settled, which is great. All of our state documents are done, wills, you know, power of attorney, all the all that good stuff. So that's totally check check the box. The one other thing you didn't specifically mention, but since you didn't mention it, I'm thinking it's a no. You know, everybody says we should be doing Roth conversions, but I kind of look at that like I'm not sure that makes sense. And I don't really like as you said, the reason we don't have a lot of after tax money, by the way, is we wound up buying a condo last year in our daughter's uh, town in her city so that we can mm. visit. Maybe. <laughs> so uh, the money okay. that I was quote unquote going to use to pay off, you know, it's, it's a much less expensive condo than our house. So the money I was oh. going to use to pay off my current mortgage, we wound up buying cash for a condo so we could be near the grandbaby. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so like right now, um, I don't, I don't see a huge reason to convert to a Roth. I mean, you could potentially, it's kind of like we want to see how things go. I just want you to have more liquidity at the end of the day it's sort of, you get to the same thing that, you know, your, your daughter's going to inherit a ton of money. You, there's no way you're spending all this down. What's her tax bracket right now, by the way? Their combined income is uh, probably about 175, something like that. Yeah. So she's probably going to be in a lower tax bracket than you. So if she inherits her IRA, that's fine. I mean, you look, let's see, I might change my opinion if you had more liquidity, if you have that. Okay. So you sell the house, let's say you sell the house, You've got that money. You save them, sell the rental property. You have that money. Now there's a couple, there's like a million ish that's in cash. Now, maybe it's a couple of years from now and you could potentially start converting some of the money into a Roth, but I just need to have, make sure that you have that cushion to A, pay the taxes and B, be able to spend the money you need. So you could potentially start converting the Roth because the asset received as a Roth for your daughter is far better, obviously, if you pay the tax than she 
And, you know, it's kind of a bet on where tax brackets go. And uh, I'm not so convinced that for her it's going to go way higher, but we'll see, right? And uh, stop working so hard, Marcy, for God's sakes. I mean, I never I never say that, you know, but really it's uh, it's been an amazing um, ride for you and you have done a phenomenal job of saving. So I really think you're in great shape. And if things change, if tax laws change, if anything's going on, you want to you know, give us a holler. Of course, you're welcome to come back on the air because you've been very pleasant. Can I ask you one last quickie? quickie? Funding a 529 for the grandchild. Yeah, but that's just eating up some of your liquidity. I mean, yes, fine. Again, if there's way more money, that's fine. Don't worry about this kid. Really. I mean, you could honestly, at that point, you could probably just pay for tuition eventually. God willing, you should be around. But you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's just, that's not going to be an issue. You know, let's see how things go. Maybe there's going to be more than one kid and, you know, you'll you'll have to see. And there could be a reason why you'd want to get money out fast if there were some issue. But you, you will have the chance to make that decision after you have enough liquidity. OK, well, listen, enjoy yourself in Pennsylvania. Happy springtime. I hope you are safe and healthy and uh, really wish you only the best things because for a rich woman, you really seem very nice. <laughs> I have to say, you two have been my salve every morning during pandemic. But your first thing I do is listen to your uh, podcast, and it while well, I have my coffee. So thank you for that. Oh well, we so appreciate you doing that, and we really wish you the best. So thanks for joining us. And if you would like to be like Marcy, who doesn't want five and a half million dollars, even if it is pre-tax, you know, why don't you give us a holler? Our email address is askjill at jillonmoney dot com. Our website, jillonmoney.com, we've got a contact button there. You are on the website and you're poking around and having fun. Guess what else you should do? Sign up for our free weekly newsletter. And that would really make us happy. If you're listening to us on YouTube, which I just went on a weird YouTube, like down a rabbit hole recently. It's pretty dangerous. But if that's where you're listening to us, you can subscribe to the podcast and you will not miss a single episode. Do it wherever you get your podcast that may be apple or spotify or stitcher or odyssey whatever check it out don't forget to wash your hands to wear your masks when you're inside maintain your physical distancing and try to do something nice for someone else today thanks for listening and we'll talk to you tomorrow 